Countless people find that when they switch over to a plant-based diet, many of their digestive issues completely resolve. There's a huge amount of anecdotal evidence to support this, but perhaps the most impressive scientific study looking at the effect plant-based diets have on one of the most devastating gastrointestinal disorders, Crohn's disease, found remarkable results. The researchers found that after two years, 92% of the participants on the mostly plant-based diet were symptom-free, and the findings were described as, quote, the best result in relapse prevention. However, for some people, their gas, bloating and digestive issues don't seem to improve on a plant-based diet. So in this video, we're going to explore this. Dr. Alan Desmond, a plant-based gastroenterologist here in the UK, amongst other things, recommends we take a vegan omega-3 supplement. This is because many studies have shown that dietary omega-3 oils help to reduce intestinal inflammation and maintain good gut health. Short-chain omega-3s, ALA, are found in flax, chia, hemp seeds and walnuts. But for the long-chain omega-3s, EPA and DHA, he says we should consider taking a daily algae supplement, aiming for at least 250 mg or more of EPA DHA per day. He also mentions that for those struggling with digestive issues on a plant-based diet, they should take into consideration FODMAPs, which are short-chain carbohydrates. Now FODMAPs are highly beneficial as they act as prebiotics, food for our healthy gut bugs, but a high intake of FODMAP-rich foods can lead to excess fermentation, digestive gas and bloating. For example, avocado, cauliflower, beans, garlic and onions are high in FODMAPs. He says we don't need to eliminate these foods completely, but we can reduce our FODMAP intake and still maintain a healthy and diverse plant-based diet. So now, let's hear from Dr. Michael Greger as he talks about gas, bloating, IBS and a plant-based diet. Okay, so if you uh, feel bloated, gassy, um, switching to a plant-based diet, do it slower. Your gut flora, after decades of eating milkshakes and cheeseburgers, slathering your insides with those fiber-free foods, you foster the growth of these bacteria that take those foods and produce these toxic compounds like TMAO, all sorts of other problems, increasing colon cancer risk, and all sorts of other problems. Okay, then all of a sudden, you eat fiber, and, the, and your gut bacteria is like, what is this? All right, now slowly, you will start uh, fostering the growth of fiber-eating bacteria, um, and those bad bacteria that were making TMAO stuff start dying off, those meat-eating bacteria, and you'll foster the growth of these really good bacteria, but that takes time. That takes time to shift. Um, some people shift quicker than others. So, you know, if beans cause you to be bloated, well, you know, start out with just like, hey, spoonful of beans um, until you work up till my recommended three servings of legumes a day. You may not be able to switch to that immediately. Go slow and let your body adapt to its normal intake of fiber. Remember, our best estimate of kind of prehistoric people's fiber intake, over 100 grams a day, like 115 grams a day. I mean, that's extraordinary amounts of fiber. I mean, oh, that's like eight times more than the fiber we're getting now. The average fiber intake is only about 15 grams, not even reaching the recommended minimum daily intake for 97% of Americans. 100 grams of fiber, even like a really good plant-based diet would probably only get you about 60, um, 70 grams of fiber. And so that's just extraordinary amounts of plant foods, but I wouldn't switch to that in one day may cause some uh, gastrointestinal upset, but that will go away with time as your body adapts. Fiber is the anti-inflammatory in the gut. IBS has been tied to what's called dysbiosis, which is an imbalance in good bacteria in your gut. What you want to do is foster the growth of good gut bugs. And what do those good gut bugs eat? What do they live off of? They live off of prebiotics. That's dietary fiber and resistant starch found concentrated in whole plant foods, particularly legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, lentils, or whole grains, particularly whole intact grains. That's the way we feed our good gut flora. No wonder it's so successful in uh, fighting uh, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, and can also help with IBS. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more upcoming videos.